You may have heard of ETFs, exchange traded funds, mutual funds, or index funds. All of these are fund-based investments. But what makes them so, and why do investors use them? Let's break it down. A fund is a collection of money belonging to many investors, and it's used to buy investments like stocks, bonds, options, and many more. Think of it like a group of people with a common interest who pull their money together to buy a portion of something that they can't or don't want to buy on their own. Let's say you wanted to rent a house for a summer vacation and found the perfect one online. However, the owner of the house only rented out per month and you only have one week of vacation. So you find three other people who want to rent the house for one week only and put your money together to rent the house for a month. Each of you gets to have a one week vacation by splitting the cost to rent the house for a month four ways. Now let's take a look at how a fund is created while identifying some key terms and characteristics. Each fund will have an investment goal in order to help investors decide if the fund is a good fit for them. The company issuing the fund will appoint a fund manager to make the investment decisions while trying to achieve the fund stated goal. The fund managers pay a fee for their services directly from the money in the fund. This fee is typically calculated as a percentage of the assets that make up the fund. The total value of assets within a fund is known as the net asset value, or NAV. The manager's fee and other costs or expenses associated with running the fund are added together and called the management expense ratio, or MER. By identifying the MER as a percentage, investors can compare expenses between different funds. There are many different types of investment funds. Open-end fund. The number of units in an open-end fund is always changing. The number of shares created is based on the nav of the fund and the amount of money that is being invested. For example, if the nav of a fund is $10 and an investor buys $1,000 worth of shares, then 100 new shares are created. But if an investor wants to sell their 100 shares, then the shares are redeemed by the fund and no longer exist. A common type of open-end fund is a mutual fund. We'll discuss mutual funds in more detail in another lesson later in the course. Closed-end fund. A closed-end fund issues a fixed number of shares privately or in an initial public offering, IPO. Because the number of shares created is fixed, supply and demand influence the price of each share. If the demand for buying shares of the fund is higher than the supply of selling shares of the fund, then the price of the share will go up. This causes the shares to trade at a premium to the nav of the fund. The opposite can occur as well, causing the shares to trade at a discount. ETF. It may come as no surprise to you, but ETFs do trade on an exchange. So, an investor can buy and sell shares of ETFs just as they would stocks. Like open-ended funds, shares of an ETF can be created or redeemed if required. We'll talk more about ETFs in another lesson. Index funds. An index fund is a mutual fund, or ETF, that has a goal to match the performance of a financial market index. Fund managers will focus their investments on the components of the index they're tracking. An index is a way of valuing a hypothetical portfolio of securities that represent a specific market or segment of it. An index can measure many different types of investments, like stocks and bonds. We'll cover index funds in more detail in another lesson too. Hedge fund. A hedge fund is a type of investment fund that allows a portfolio manager to use more complex trading strategies in an attempt to maximize performance. They're more complex and riskier in nature than other funds, so they aren't something that new investors typically buy. In fact, financial regulators usually restrict this type of investment to more sophisticated or high net worth investors. Funds can be divided into two general categories, active or passive. Think of this as the approach the fund manager takes when making investment decisions. An active fund manager will try to outperform the returns of the market. As you can imagine, this process involves a lot of research and analysis to determine which investments to make and when to make them. Because this can take some time, the MER is generally higher. A passive fund manager, on the other hand, tries to match the returns of the index that the fund tracks. 
Because there's minimal research and analysis involved in this route, the MER is generally lower. Despite the variety of investment funds, each can provide investors with benefits compared to investing in individual securities. Investors can enjoy diversification, professional management, and fewer transactions. These benefits do come with some potential disadvantages too though. Management fees on top of transaction fees, no control over individual investment choices within a fund, and no ownership of individual companies. That said, as a self-directed investor, you never have to choose to invest only in investment funds or only in individual securities. You can choose to invest in both.